So are you one of the ones torn between the Mini 3 Pro and the Air 2S? And you went with the Air 2S. Well, congratulations on buying a great drone. Whether you are waiting for the Air 2S to arrive or you just got it, this video is for you. I'm going to help you walk through a quick basic beginner's guide on how to set yourself up for that first great flight. Let's get started. So here I have the Air 2S Fly More Combo Package, and I'll go over what comes in this package as well as if you had ordered the standard package for the Air 2S. Now the Fly More Combo, you're going to receive the RCN1 controller, which we're all used to. You'll receive the drone, the Air 2S, of course, and three total drone batteries, as well as the charging bank. And there's this cool little adapter that you can plug one of your batteries into and turn it into an external bank for a tablet, for a phone, or to charge your remote control if it's low. You get three total pairs of replacement blades, which I think is amazing, as well as replacement joysticks and three different connectors to go to your RCN1 controller. You'll get lightning, USB-C, and micro USB. Now, if you had ordered the standard Air 2S package, you would not receive the two additional batteries nor this charging brick. You would not receive the travel bag. You would not get this fancy little adapter, but everything else is included, which I think is amazing. You're gonna get the three sets of replacement blades. They don't reduce the blades like they do in other packages. Once you have everything unpacked, the first thing you wanna do is to charge all of your batteries, starting with your drone battery. The drone battery, in order to charge this, you're going to have to open your arms or legs, some people call them legs, and take your battery out. Go ahead and close this arm back up. And then it will connect directly to this bad boy. And then obviously you're going to put your electrical cord in here and then plug into the wall. And according to DJI, on the drone batteries, you're going to get approximately a flight time of 31 minutes. Now, I'll be honest, real world, my experience, I'm lucky to get 21, 22 minutes out of the charge. Now, when it comes to the RCN1 controller, you're going to get up to six hours of battery life out of this. Once you've charged your batteries, you want to then give your drone a once over. What does that mean? Essentially, you're going to look for anything that is out of order like loose parts. Um, the blades, I think, are primary. I would always check your blades first uh, to see if there's anything, you know, any chips, any fractures. Of course, when the drone's brand new, there should not be any. But if there are, you're going to have to replace those blades with new ones. And then you want to look over your camera. And the gimbal cover on this can be a little tricky, but you're going to put your thumb in this section and then your fingers at the top and you're gonna squeeze. Just do a squeeze. So here, I'll show you a side view. You're gonna squeeze, pinch, and then once it's loose, then you gotta let it go. Otherwise you're forcing down on it and it's not gonna come off. You're gonna pull the, <laughs> you know, it's like pulling the neck, man. You don't wanna do that. So once it's loose, you're just gonna work your way off of the camera. It's not the easiest, but it definitely holds uh, the camera and the gimbal and a good position to make sure it's safe. So once the gimbal covers off, you're just going to want to make sure nothing's holding the gimbal back from being able to have free play, free motion here. Same thing with the camera. It's going to tilt or have the opportunity or the, you have the option to tilt it up and down during flight. So you just want to make sure that's got free play as well. Now you can turn everything on. I recommend that you turn on the drone first and make sure you don't have the gimbal cover on. The gimbal needs to have full rotation and movement whenever you boot up the drone. And you're gonna power up the drone by pressing once and holding a second time on the drone. You can hear the fan, the drone is now booting up. With the remote, I always recommend that you attach your tablet or your phone, have it powered on and unlocked. The reason why is if you do it this way and then turn the drone remote on, it will automatically launch the DJI Fly app for you. You don't have to search for it or anything. Let me show you. So same sequence, you just press once and press and hold a second time. Now the remote powers up. I heard, uh, felt the vibration and the DJI Fly app automatically is launched. So I'm gonna exit out of this flight screen, go back to the main screen. 
you can see that I already have my drone registered and the DJI Fly app is recognizing it. In your case, when the drone's brand new, it's going to require you to log in or create a DJI account. If you have to create an account, it's really simple, just an email address and then create a password. Once you've done that, you will then register your drone. And the drone, as well as the remote control, have a separate serial number and they will be married together and registered. After you register your drone, make sure you download any new firmware updates. It's a safety thing. You want to have all the firmware updated on the drone and the remote before you ever go on a flight. Once you've updated your firmware, you want to check for any errors and their codes. And the way to do that is at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see it says go fly. You just tap on that. Once the screen opens, you're going to want to go to what's called the pre-flight check screen. On the left, top left hand corner of the screen, you see an arrow that exits back to the main screen. You see end mode, that stands for what speed you have the drone set on. And then next to that, it says altitude zone. Now this could say anything. It could say clear to fly, good to go. You wanna tap on that and it'll open the pre-flight screen. At the very top, it says normal. If there were any warnings or any errors, you would see the message as well as the corresponding code. But in this case, everything looks good with the drone and I have no concerns. To exit out of this, you just simply tap on the left-hand side and you're back to the main flight screen. Now, before you take your first flight, I recommend we do a hover test next. You're simply gonna take your drone outside and find a fairly hard flat surface in an open area that has nothing immediately around or above the drone. You always wanna look out for tree branches and electrical lines and a roof line if you're near a structure. Now, what you're going to do is just simply hover about three or four feet off the ground. This is just an initial test that will tell us if your drone is in good condition or not. So now we're ready to do our hover test with the Air 2S. Now, first things first, I still have the gimbal cover on. You always want to leave that cover on, especially when you're not running your drone. You want to make sure you don't damage the camera, damage the gimbal. But when you go to turn the drone on, you must take it off or else the gimbal cannot do its full orientation on initial setup. So let's take that gimbal cover off first. And the way that you do it on the Air 2S is you get your thumb in here, get your fingers on the top there, and you're gonna pinch together. But then as it's coming off, you gotta release or else you can't pull it out. It's too tight. There, now it's off. Now the sequence that I prefer on uh, starting everything up is to start the drone first, but to have your phone or your tablet in, unlocked, and ready to go. Because once you do that, it will automatically launch the DJI Fly app for you when you turn the remote on. It's pretty cool. So drone first. Again, the sequence is press once, press a second time and hold. Now the drone's fired up and warming up. And then we'll turn the remote on again by pressing once and pressing and holding a second time. And the DJI Fly app will automatically launch here in just a second. And there we go, it's launched. Now right here at the top, we're going to look at our pre-flight checklist again. And that's because the drone still landed on the ground. Tap that. And for pre-flight, it says everything's normal and we're ready to launch the drone. So we can exit back out of that screen and we will go to the launch. On the left-hand side here, there's a circle with an up arrow. You're just gonna press that once, and then where it says take off, you press and hold until that circle completes, and then let go, and the drone will automatically take off. There we go. Gosh, that looks awesome. Now, first things first, we're going to do that pre-flight check area again. It's at the top of the screen. Now that we're hovering about three or four feet off the ground, you can tap on that. Now under here, it says GPS signal weak, hovering unstable, fly with caution. This is a perfect example of why you wanna check this before you go on a full-fledged first flight. Hover test is complete. We're gonna tap out of the screen. And in order to land the drone, it's now the circle on the left-hand side with the arrow pointing down. So we're gonna tap that once. Where it says land, you're gonna tap and hold until the circle completes. Let go of the circle and the drone will land itself. Perfect hover test. So now you're ready for your first flight, right? 
Well, you may be thinking that, but, but hold on for one second. Whether, you're not, whether or not you're flying for the first time as a drone pilot or you're flying this drone that you just purchased for the first time, I believe in a pre-flight checklist. I believe it's a good idea before taking off. Now I've put together another video where I go over my own personal pre-flight checklist that has saved me a lot of time and potential headaches that you know happen when you crash a drone. Now you can watch this video by clicking or tapping here.